Technology and Energy Efficiency Department at ASEAN Center for Energy. And I'll be your Master of Ceremony for today's Capacity Building. We are delighted to welcome all of you to the series of ASEAN China Capacity Building on Solar PV Utilization Day 1, which will focus on solar PV plus potential as green recovery strategy. This capacity building aims to promote the green recovery and sustainable energy transition in ASEAN through the increased solar utilization. This capacity building is a part of the study project, namely utilization of solar PV, solar PV support the green economic recovery in ASEAN post-COVID-19, which commissioned by ASEAN China Cooperation Fund, or ACCF. I also would like to know that I would also would like to inform you that we also right now streaming in our YouTube channel ASEAN Center for Energy. So you may check later on the recording session in our uh, chat box. Before we begin the session, please allow me to share with you several housekeeping announcements. Participants should ensure a convenient environment and reduce background noises such as turn off the cell phone and etc. Finally, should mute their microphone and only unmute if they wish to present or speak and is permitted by the organizer. Finally, should only turn on their video camera when presenting or speaking during the discussion session as turning on the video may impact the quality of the connection and voice quality. This workshop will be recorded. We kindly ask for your understanding and consent in doing so. Participants can drop the question via Zoom Q&A feature or the chat uh, box. If there is a technical issue during the workshop, participants may contact the organizer through the chat box function. Next slide, please. Excellencies, participants, ladies and gentlemen, we will proceed with the first welcoming remark from Mr. Ajirim bin Abdul Rashid. He is a senior under secretary for sustainable energy Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources of Malaysia, or RE as a chair. Because today is uh, Malaysia Independent Day, uh, first I would like to convey my warm wishes for those who are celebrating this special day. Due to this occasion, Mr. Ajdirim couldn't join with us to deliver his opening remarks online, but we already received the recording to be played right now. Thank you. Sorry, uh, I cannot hear the voice. Um, oh, yeah, I cannot hear the voice. Can you share with the audio? Share, share the video with the audio. Huang Cheng, Director of ASEAN China Cooperation Fund, ACCF. Dr. Ku Hongbin, Deputy Director General of China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute, CRE. Dr. Nuki Agya Utama, Executive Director of ASEAN Center for Energy, is Good morning and good day from Malaysia to all excellencies, participants, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, on behalf of the Chair of the Renewable Energy Subsector Network, RESSN, Mr. Asti Raimi Abdul Rashid, I am honoured to welcome all participants and excellencies to the capacity building event, Solar PV Plus Potential as Green Recovery Strategy on the first day of the ASEAN China Capacity Building Series on Solar PV Plus. Fellow participants, the global pandemic has negatively influenced the daily activities of all industries and sectors, and the energy sector is no exception. According to the 7th ASEAN Energy Outlook, AEO7, one of the flagship publications of the ASEAN Center of Energy is the economic downturn due to COVID-19 has caused a 5.3% decline in total primary energy supply or TPAS from 2019 level and a decrease of 7.1% in GDP. However, the silver lining of this situation is that renewable energy in TPAS has increased by 0.7% from 13.5% in 2019 to 14.2% in 2020. 
the RE growth has shown the resilience of this energy source amidst the pandemic and the immense potential to recover the economy in the post-COVID-19 period. Through the ASEAN Energy Blueprint, the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, APAI Phase 2, for the period of 2021 to 2025, the region has established targets to achieve 23% and 35% of RE share in the TPES and installed power capacity by 2025 respectively. Despite the positive development of RE growth in 2020, there is still an 8.8% gap in TPES for ASEAN to realize the aspirational targets. Furthermore, based on the ASEAN Master Plan Study 3 or AIMS 3, an additional 83 gigawatt of new capacity should be added to achieve the applied phase two targets by 2025. Given the urgent need for significant efforts and timely action among 10 ASEAN member states for economic recovery after the strike of the global pandemic, solar energy or photovoltaic technology in particular has come across as a viable option to contribute to green economic recovery and energy transition in the post-COVID-19 era. Solar PV is no longer a foreign RE source. However, its expansion beyond a mere energy generating source is still a new concept and has yet to be fully explored in ASEAN. Under the umbrella term of Solar PV+, Plus, the application of PV system can be integrated into many sectors' daily activities such as agriculture, fisheries, buildings, and ecological management. With an aim to introduce further utilization of solar PV in different sectors and how this new approach can be beneficial in economic recovery in the ASEAN region, ACE has collaborated with CRE with the support from ASEAN China Cooperation to organize the capacity building series under the project utilization of solar PV plus to support the green economic recovery in ASEAN post COVID-19. This capacity building series support the implementation of API phase two under the program area for renewable energy. Therefore, on behalf of the RESSN, the responsible body for this program area, I hope that the three days event series will not only develop a pool of talent amongst solar professionals, but also to promote information sharing among government officials and experts in solar PV+, where success stories of each AMS can be learned and enhanced. All discussions, sharing, and experience exchange throughout the capacity building series will be of great importance on establishing key recommendations for solar PV plus updates across ASEAN. Last but not least, I would like to sincerely thank all the colleagues from ACE, ACCF and CRE for making this event a reality. I hope all of you will have a successful first day and I also would like to send my appreciation to all the panelists, experts and participants who have taken their time to join the event. And I hope everyone will have fruitful discussions and meaningful takeaway messages after the event. With that, I wish you all good health and a productive discussion ahead. Thank you. All right. Excellencies, participants, ladies and gentlemen, for the next welcoming remarks, we are pleased to invite Mr. Huang Chen. He is um, Director of ASEAN China Cooperation Fund or ACCF. Mr. Huang Chen, please. Um, 
Kerana uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, um, Mr. Uh, Adorain Abdul Rasim, Senior Under Secretary for Sustainable Energy, Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources, Malaysia. <laughs> Dr. Hu Hongbin, uh, Deputy Director General of China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute. Dr. Nuki Agaya Utama, Executive Director of the ASEAN Center for Energy. Mr. Bolong Sesanamo, Director, Division of Renewable Energy Promotion of Law PDR. Mr. Bachaling Pachitayan, Engineer of the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency. Dr. Wang Luo, or Wang So, Senior Energy of CREI, Dr. Ahmed Abdus, uh, City of Van, Energy Expert, uh, staff in the President of the Indonesia Office, Mr. Sascha uh, Krauser Dunker, CEO of uh, Next to Sun, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Huang Chen. I am from the ASEAN China Cooperation Fund. Uh, to begin with, uh, let me first take a quick review of current development of China photovoltaic PV industry. Why China photovoltaic industry maintains the world leading position in industrial scale? China has established detailed policy for the PV industry and has made breakthroughs in PV technology in terms of the average convention efficiency. Why China is actively promoting PV plus utilization and other innovative applications. In the meanwhile, ASEAN has become China's biggest partner in international renewable energy corporations. China is willing to share the experience and achievement of energy development and transition with ASEAN member states. As they found on the ASEAN and China 10 plus one mechanism, as I said, aim to support broader, high-level, and deeper energy cooperation in this region, as well as achieve win-win cooperation for joint and complementary development among China and ASEAN member states. Uh, second, uh, uh, a few words about the productive green energy cooperations between ASEAN and China. Since 2017, with five-year hard working and careful planning, under the guidance and support by China government, specifically with the China National Energy Administration and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute, CRWEI, along with other China Green Energy Entity, joined together with ACE and other ASEAN organization has carried out extensive cooperation in the field of clean energy and the related areas. China and ASEAN Green Energy Corporations have many solid mechanism foundations, such as East Asia Summit, uh, including ASEAN plus three and ASEAN plus one mechanism. Uh, the framework of East Asia Summit Clean Energy Forum, China ASEAN Clean Energy Forum, East Asia Summit Clean Energy Forum, China ASEAN Clean Energy Capacity Building Program, and so many, and so on. Those mechanisms, those mechanisms and programs have greatly opened up the regional cooperation and laid the solid base for strengthening China ASEAN green energy corporations. Their achievements have been highly valued by both national leaders, by China and ASEAN. In November uh, last year, uh, in November 2021, uh, in his remarks, to comm commemorate 30 years anniversary of ASEAN-China Dialogue Partnership, uh, President Xi Jinping emphasized that we should jointly promote regional energy transformation, explore the establishment of clean energy cooperation centers, and strengthen the share sharing of renewable energy technology. We should strengthen cooperations in green finance and green investment 
to support low carbon sustainable development in this region, while further affirming the achievements of region, regional clean energy corporations. President Xi, in his remarks, clear, clearly requires the establishment of further China ASEAN Green Energy Corporation and uh, to uh, establish of a Clean Energy Corporation Center to enhance joint cooperation among both sides. A uh, third, I would like to affirm uh, SSF Fund, ASEAN China Cooperation Fund, our commitment to support to China ASEAN Green Energy Corporation and, and the establishment of China ASEAN Clean Energy Cooperation Center. Our fund, SSF, will keep actively implement, implement the leaders' initiative, strengthen cooperation with all clean energy stakeholders. We are confident that with the uh, establishment of the China ASEAN Clean Energy Cooperation Center, more green energy cooperation can be carried out and make further contributions to the after pandemic economy recovery in this region, as well as the development of China ASEAN relations. Uh, last but not least, I would like to take, take this opportunity to thank ASEAN Center for Energy and uh, Dr. Noki and uh, colleagues from uh, CRWEI for your cooperation and uh, support to SSF Fund and uh, my team, AMT. Our fund, SSF, also welcome project applications from all sides to enhance good relations between ASEAN and China. Again, I wish the event were successful. Thank you again. Uh, thank you for your attention. Now back to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Huang Cheng, for your excellent speech. Our next distinguished speaker here is Dr. Gu Hongbin, Deputy Director General of China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute, or CREEI. Dr. Hongbin, the time is yours. Mr. Principal, <coughs> Dr. Utama, <coughs> Councillor Mr. Huang Chen, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's my great pleasure to join this capacity building in the discussion of solar PV application in multiple scenarios. <coughs> On behalf of Kliyi, <coughs> I would like to thank us for the thoughtful agreements and uh, ACCF for the consistent support to China <coughs> ASEAN Clean Energy Corporation and the Clean Energy Capacity Building Program. <coughs> First, I'd like to talk briefly about CLEI and our cooperation with us. CLEI was established in 1950. Over the years, we played a major role in China IE development and the carbon goal implementation. We're <coughs> dedicated to policy research, <coughs> theory in innovation, standards development, and technology advancement. <coughs> Appointed by NEA of China, we learn a number of national centers and stations exploring various aspects of RE technology and development. S and CLEI have worked together under the guidance of NEA and Asian Secretary Talia since 2015. Over the years, we have built a highly influent Ensures exchange platforms, including <coughs> EAS, CEF, and the East Asia Summit, Clean Energy Roundtable Dialogue, and ASEAN Plus 3, China <coughs> ASEAN Clean Energy Capacity Building Program. Just as Mr. Huang Chen mentioned, and achieved remarkable results in joint research. Our cooperation outcomes were all included in the ministerial statements and 
of EAS and AMEM plus three and were highly acknowledged by the national leaders. And China has in clean energy capacity building program, in particular, was the first energy program including in China strategic <coughs> partnership version 2030. 20, 2030. <coughs> this year, as we work to prepare for the Asian China Clean Energy Cooperation Center, <coughs> we again received strong support from Uh, I think we lost uh, Dr. Gu, yeah. Yes, uh, me too. I don't mind internet connection. Yeah, Christina, maybe uh, while uh, waiting, we can like move on first to the next, perhaps. Okay, uh, sure, Miss Monica. Okay, because of technical uh, issues coming from Dr. Gu Hongbin, now we'd like to uh, move on to the next speaker. So I would like to invite Dr. Um, Nuki Agyautama, Executive Director of ASEAN Center for Energy, to give his opening remarks. Dr. Nuki, the time is yours. Thank you, Christina. Uh... Good morning and good afternoon. Oh, wait a second, a bit echoing. Hello, hello, okay. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Christina, uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Your Excellencies, Mr. Astir Himne Abdul Rasib, the Senior Undersecretary of Sustainable Energy, the Ministry of Energy and Natural Resources, Malaysia. Mr. Huang Cheng, the Director of ASEAN China Cooperation Fund, or ACCF. Dr. Gu Hongbin, the Deputy Director General of China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute, or CRE. Also, Ms. Ak, um, <clears throat> uh, colleagues, uh, keynote speaker, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, also, uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmad Agus as the staff expert from this uh, uh, Indonesian uh, government of Indonesia. Uh, on behalf of the ASEAN Center for Energy, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this first day of the ASEAN China Capacity Building Series on solar PV plus utilization. <clears throat> solar PV plus uh, utilization, which focuses on the solar PV plus potential as a green recovery strategy. I would like to thank our partners, the ASEAN China Cooperation Fund, ACCF, and also China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute, or CRE, for supporting this project and making today's capacity building possible. The project's aims, namely, uh, utilization of solar PV to support the green economy recovery in ASEAN post-COVID-19. It is to promote the green recovery and sustainable energy transition in ASEAN through increased solar PV utilization. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, please allow me to share some renewable energy milestones in ASEAN region. <clears throat> the 38th ASEAN Ministers on Energy Meeting, or AMEM, hosted virtually by Vietnam in 2021, endorsed two significant deliverables. The first is the endorsement of the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, APEC Phase Two. 2021-2025, serving as a blueprint for the long-term transformation of ASEAN energy landscape towards a sustainable future. And secondly, it's the sixth ASEAN Energy Outlook, AO6, which was endorsed to supplement APAIC Phase 2, 
which identifying pathways and scenario to pursue regional targets. It endorsed new regional targets to increase the share of RE by 33 <clears throat> share of RE by 23% in total primary energy supply and also 35% in installed power capacity at the same year, based on the in the based on the 2005 level. According to our preliminary finding in 2020, the total installed capacity of RE reached 33.5%, implying that 1.5% more effort is needed to meet the APEC PSD target. However, solar energy only accounted for a small share by 8%, equaling 22.9 gigawatt installed in the region. The share remains low in comparison to hydro energy share of up to 20.9%. Thus, ASEAN needs to step up the efforts to accelerate solar photovoltaic deployment beyond power duration, such as in agriculture, fisheries, building, and ecological management, which will significantly contribute to the region economy recovery while also increasing the regional energy security. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, as the growing concerns of ASEAN energy security, which the region is, ex is expected will be the net importer of all fossil fuel resources, oil, gas, and coal by early 2035. Increasing the bar of renewable energy share is critical. Solar power is the fastest growing form of renewable energy with clean, safe, and inexhaustible benefits. Solar energy development and utilization are of a great significance in energy transition. As global costs of solar PV have gradually decreased over the past couple of decades, the technology has become more attractive and competitive in the regional market. And some ASEAN member states have also implemented incentive mechanism to boost solar PV adoption in the region. With this condition in place, the region's solar PV development is expected to increase by 15% in 2040. And according to the sixth ASEAN Energy Outlook under ASEAN Member States Scenario Target or ATS, and the sea size seizing the significant potential of solar PV utilization in ASEAN is considered one of the most effective green recovery strategies for the post COVID 19 pandemic. <clears throat> Increasing investment in solar PV deployment can create direct and, and also indirect job creation. The direct job include human resources will work directly in the solar PV installation, while indirect jobs include other supporting roles in the supply chains. According to the ATS scenario, increased solar power installation would create approximately more than 61,000 new jobs by 2025. In addition, it is essential to maximize the potential of solar photovoltaic utilization beyond power generation, such, <clears throat> such as agriculture, fishery, building, and also ecological management to support the regional green recovery. Colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, realizing and fully harnessing the untapped potential of solar PV beyond power duration should be considered. ASEAN recognized the lev leveraging best practices across the region and internationally is becoming increasingly important in promoting the essential roles of solar PV in many sectoral areas. Conducting capacity building on solar PV utilization in ASEAN provide the ASEAN member state with a platform to exchange experiences, views, and strategies to accelerate the solar PV deployment in the region. The capacity buildings also align with one of the action plans under the outcome-based strategy number, number six, which is to enhance the ASEAN RE information. We are hopefully that today's activities and also the next two days of capacity building will provide the opportunity to build your capacity and strengthen networks among policymakers, academics, and professionals across the solar energy in ASEAN region. We look forward to collaboration with you all in the future to achieve the regional goals set out in the APEC phase two and recover the green economy post COVID-19. I wish you all a productive and insightful session. Again, thank you very much for your kind support and your valuable time for attending these activities. Uh, stay safe and stay healthy. Back to you, Christina.
Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Nuki, for your excellent speech. May I check with um, Dr. Gu Hongbin? May I check your audio, please? Or perhaps Dr. Muji? We're continuing the remarks. Okay. Um, I think hearing none, uh, please allow me to proceed with the next uh, session, which is group photo session. Before we move on to the next agenda, we will hold a group photo session. So please, to all of the speakers and also participants, you may turn on your video camera and take a position. Okay, let me, yeah. Okay, ready? I will count them from three. Three, two, one. Smile. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, um, can you share the screen? Next slide, please. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to uh, give the overview about our capacity building activities from day one until day three. Next slide, please. Like I have mentioned before that we are uh, here right now, day one, we're focusing on the solar PV potential as grid recovery strategy. And we'll already uh, invite our um, excellent uh, speakers and so panelists to join our session, uh, fruitful uh, session today. And for the next capacity building that will be held in 5th October and 6th October 2022, we will have one month gap because ASEAN will uh, convene what we call as AMEM or ASEAN Ministers on Energy Meeting and its Association Meeting in September. So we will continue again for the next uh, two day of capacity building in 5th and 6th October, which each of the day will uh, focus on the different topic. For first day topic, we'll focus on the solar PV plus in agriculture, fishery, and animal husbandry. And for the next day, we'll focus on the solar PV in building and ecological management. And each of the session will uh, begin in, in the morning, starting from 9 a.m. till 12 a.m. Jakarta time. So for those who have yet uh, registered to our next two days capacity building, you may scan our uh, barcode as you can uh, see in this slide. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the next agenda, we will begin the session one, which is solar PV plus potential as grid recovery that will be moderated by Mr. Septia Buntara Supendi. He is manager of renewable energy and energy efficiency department at ASEAN Center for Energy. Without further ado, I will hand over the session to Mr. Septia. The time is yours. Excellent. Thank you very much, Christina, for the gracious introduction. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be the moderator of this session. Just a couple of weeks ago, we went to one of the islands uh, in Indonesia, and we, we saw there how the children get smile by utilization of the solar PV uh, in their area. So this is a, a trigger point for us to be able to, to utilize more and more renewable energy, especially like solar PV, not only for power generation, but also something else that in line with the people needs, so at the end can leverage their uh, capacity and also the, the usefulness of the local economy. As mentioned by Christina today, uh, this session, we will discuss important topic about potential solar PV plus uh, beyond the power generation uh, business, uh, which supported by the ASEAN China Cooperation Fund. As, as we may aware, Despite some member states uh, may already have relatively high renewable energy proportion and planning. For example, Lao PDR with the large hydropower utilization 
We believe the diversification of solar energy and with other type of feasible renewable energy source is an important strategy to strengthen our regional security. In this occasion, the keynote speakers and panelists from the ASEAN member states and also uh, uh, key stakeholders are expected to share their views on potential of solar PV utilization as green recovery strategy. So many things happened in the past. I think we're still uh, uh, experiencing the COVID-19. We need to bounce back stronger for better economy recovery by utilization of renewable energy. The session will begin with presentation from Indonesia. Then the session will be followed by presentation from the ASEAN Center for Energy, Gray, and next to Sun. I would like to remind each of the presenter to take only 15 minutes because uh, we're aiming for more discussion within the panel discussion later on. Then in the end of the session, uh, we will have a further discussion, interactive discussion together with the audience. Without further ado, uh, let us begin with the first session or presentation. I believe it will be a very interesting session because uh, uh, the speaker is expert directly for utilization of solar PV plus to the direct uh, uh, rural uh, communities. Uh, we, we have Dr. Ahmad Agustutiawan here, the energy expert staff in the executive office of the President of Republic of Indonesia and was an expert panelist for Indonesian presidential debate in 2019. I would like to give the floor to Dr. Ahmad. Maybe, Krishna, would you mind to remind Dr. Ahmad if the time about to finish? Dr. Ahmad, time is yours. Thank you very much, Mas Septia Buntara Zupendi. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Good uh, uh, evening. Good uh, morning, maybe. Yes, I'm Ahmad Agustiawan. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity for having this uh, excellent discussion with uh, ASEAN Center of Energy and uh, the Chinese. Yeah, I would like to bring these uh, issues, potential economy, economic creation from solar PV utilization in Indonesia's rural communities. As uh, mentioned before, I'm uh, energy expert staff in the executive office of the President of Republic Indonesia. And also I'm a lecturer at the Department of Nuclear Engineering and Engineering Physics, Universitas Gajah Mada. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is very important currently that uh, we have a discussion on transition energy. Uh, in fact, I'm now in G20 Energy Transition Working Group with the Director of uh, Director Executive of the ASEAN Center of Energy here in Bali. And this is uh, becoming very important things and issues that uh, we are dealing with the sustainable development. So as we know that uh, some of uh, sustainable development goals uh, one of them is sustainable energy. And what we, we are talking about sustainable development in here is about uh, development that uh, always thinking about the, our future generations as well. So here we talk about the CO2 emissions that uh, we are facing on, that we, we have to uh, reduce it until 2060 something so that uh, there will be no more uh, heating up to the planet more than two degrees or 1.5 degrees. And there are some, uh, 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 what is it, understanding on net zero emission milestone. On the way, we have to uh, bring renewable energy into the uh, system. And sustainable energy for all means ensuring universal access to modern energy services, doubling the global rate of improvement in energy efficiency, as well as the thing that we are discussing now, is doubling the share of renewable energy in global energy mix. And here we can see the world energy outlook that shown wind and solar energy is increasing rapidly, exponentially with the red line here, while others, the fossil fuel, will be tried to be moderated so that uh, uh, the, the, the emissions can be controlled. Here is Indonesia, or if we can see ASEAN. But uh, specifically for Indonesia, we are in the ring of fire. We have uh, this kind of, uh, what is it? Uh, something that good, but also something quite dangerous. Say for example, there are potential of disaster due to the uh, earthquake, as well as the uh, uh, volcanic eruption and others, but also vulnerable for the climate change as well. Since we have a thousand of islands that 
very dangerous in terms of uh, sea level rise. Here, the presidency framework as Indonesia becoming the, uh, the, the leaders of this uh, presidency G20, we are bringing the energy transitions as one of the uh, very important issues, apart from the global health as well as the transition, uh, uh, digital transformation. Here, the three topics is about securing energy access, smart and clean energy technologies scaling up as well as advancing energy financing. So I would like to bring you some uh, experiences uh, the way uh, we develop such a system. Say for example, at the time I was a student at, uh, for PhD in Curtin University, uh, together with the Universitas Gajah Mada, uh, we uh, go for the uh, competitions by UNESCO and uh, Daimler at the time. Uh, for the Mondial Engineering Award, which is uh, cooperative for sustainable millennium, millennium, millennium Development Goals at the time, because the MDGs is in, until 2050. This is the part of uh, rural areas in uh, Indonesia, in Java, and we can see that the utilization of uh, renewable energy is very important, especially for the solar water pumping system. So at the time, we have uh, student community services that can be uh, utilized for the uh, to bring the technology into the uh, local communities. So this is the way our students coming to the local communities, discussing and bringing the technology so that uh, it can be uh, 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 in, uh, utilized properly. So the program is uh, based on so many approach, not only technical but also social, so that uh, they work together with the local communities and then trying to uh, uh, bring in the understanding, how to organize it and so on and so forth. So potential replications also happens there. Uh, the way uh, solar energy is brought to the local community, it is usually is not a, a technological uh, background, but more or less uh, uh, farmers, uh, laborers and others. So, uh, the adopting renewable energy technology will be quite uh, some that very important for this uh, what is it, uh, stage so that we can see in here the crucial issues is local community involvement, community empowerment, and then also that we need to have support for technical as well as economy and social issues. And also capacity building is very important for the local community as organization, how to manage, how to maintain, and so on and so forth especially for the financial sectors, how to, uh, uh, it, to make sure that uh, there are some, some what is it, fee and to be utilized to maintain the system and so on and so forth. And then the net network support model from R&D institution, universities, local and national government for sustainability issues. The other things about this uh, what is it, project is about surveying, design and planning, socialization and technical organization, system installation, as well as uh, sustainability issues, all done with the uh, cooperation between students and also local communities. So in here, we can see that uh, uh, learning process is very important. And also for, from students becoming alumni, they, they can uh, also uh, start to think about a startup business and so on, on renewable energy technologies. And then the other things is about the disaster. In a time of disasters, our students also deployed in the locations such as in Padang, which is in West Sumatra, where our students are joining a group of uh, 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 student community services. Uh, they, they take care of the issues on uh, earthquake and then uh, uh, what is it, the disaster response as reconstructions and one of them bringing the solar energy system for the location where usually they cut off from the main supply of electricity. So this system can be utilized. The other is that our students also keep contacting and keep processing the solar energy on how the performance is very important as well as utilize it in other location where it is necessary, such as in uh, volcano eruption uh, locations and others. So this is the the was it the performance of the system uh, where it's installed in uh, one of location where happens there uh, Merapi volcanoes erupt 
and our students also trying to get the uh, idea of bringing technology into the actions. Others is that about productivity, our students also bring the technology for fisheries producer, where this is part of uh, uh, cooperation be between uh, Ministry of Research and Technology at a time with uh, our university as well as with the local uh, government of uh, Bantul. Uh, sorry, it was Sleiman, because this is location is in uh, Sleiman uh, in Yogyakarta. So the point is that assisting community through local student where the project implemented is very important. This educated person who understand local community and culture, and then any business will not be successful unless become friend with the people uh, or our local community. And then motivate and accompany farmer while they learn from role model in their business expect, uh, expert practitioner. The other way is the solar power aeration technologies is utilized to support fish farming in the program by Ministry of Research and Technology in Indonesia and solar power aeration promoted as renewable energy project develop the community to adopt supporting technology for improving fisheries uh, production. Other way, uh, our students also, uh, what is it, bringing this adaptation of technology that should be uh, include social and institutional practices that increase the resilience of the smallholder farmers. Here, we can see that uh, knowledge sharing by student that all technologies or practices to be transferred are not necessarily high technology, but it is adaptable techniques that are useful at the current of targeted smallholder farmer that's sufficient enough so that uh, it can be communicated in level of uh, our uh, uh, local community. And then uh, the key point, uh, the key point is the community participation is needed for capacity building. Students involvement as catalyst in the technology transfer and improve the communication process among the stakeholder. So this is part of the technology that uh, I was uh, dealing with during my PhD. It's about a hybrid power system. Also, there was a, a cooperation project between Ministry of Research and Technology and our university, Unidas Gajah Mada, where it installed uh, such a hybrid power system in uh, Bandul. Agency is a part of Yogyakarta as well. The idea is that uh, it can be utilized as a workshop, as a training services for other uh, 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 people from other uh, islands. Say, for example, one of them is the Maramit. Maramit is the uh, outer island. It's a borderline with the Philippines, Indonesia and Philippines. So this uh, island is very small, only consists of uh, maybe thousand, yeah, or not more than 10,000 people living in the area. So the, the challenge is that there is no such uh, power there. The, uh, the only power is from diesel gen genset, gen generator. And then uh, the location is uh, like this one. So uh, the way uh, we brought is that uh, some of uh, uh, youngster from this uh, area uh, getting some uh, training and workshop in the Bantul area where the facilities is there. Then uh, together with the local community, they build such system with the Ministry of Research and Technology. So you can see here, the system is uh, consisting of hybrid power system between wind energy and also solar energy system. As we can see here that uh, Indonesia with 17,000 islands uh, gets so many opportunity to to be utilized. I mean, the technology is very appropriate and uh, close to uh, uh, being deployed uh, all over Indonesia. It is possible for uh, energizing the islands. So this is the proposal things. And the way a uh, uh, challenge is like this one. We have uh, more than 2,500 uh, villages previously that needs to be electrified. And then now becoming 433 that still uh, struggling to find because of the situations, geographical conditions, as well as the political and socio, uh, sociological things. So we can see in here the program from the uh, government of Indonesia already uh, uh, achieved 206 uh, villages that can be uh, energized. 
and the rest is still there. The location were quite uh, challenging, such as the geographical conditions, um, uh, what is it, uh, safety issues, uh, political issues, and others. So this is the way um, uh, some of the project utilizing solar PV in the locations in Papua and Nusa Tenggara and so on and so forth, where uh, the rest of uh, uh, electrification is still there. Yeah, and, and here, uh, the way uh, it is utilized for more productive issues, where it can be utilized for uh, like uh, small uh, and medium enterprises and so on. This is another issue about uh, utilizing more bigger is a community scale, uh, hybrid power system, or system of uh, photovoltaic in community base and, and so on. Yeah. And this is more on uh, the way our local or our, our, our uh, national company uh, bringing the grid system into the uh, was it, lo location where the, there is needed necessary for electrifications uh, for the first time in their uh, uh, area. So this is uh, the, the challenge that we have. It's not only a matter of uh, Java, but we talk about the thousands of islands we talk about the uh, small islands, we talk about the, uh, what's it, outer island and so on and so forth, where you can, uh, you, you have to uh, uh, bring all logistics, utilizing these ships, just utilizing the, what's it, the, the road that's still not uh, well yet. I mean, you have to struggling for, for bringing all this uh, logistic to the locations. And this is the, the challenge that we have uh, for our, uh, archipelago country. Yeah. So uh, again, thank you very much for the given opportunity. And for sure, ASEAN is very important uh, to talk about uh, our future, uh, 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 our future together with uh, other colleagues from ASEAN. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry, I cannot join uh, because I have to come back to the G20 activities here in Bali. Thank you. Good luck. Wow, excellent. It was amazing presentation and I couldn't agree more, Dr. Ahmad Agus. Thousand Island with thousand characteristics of the, of the geographic condition there and also thousand characteristics of the people, local communities. And one of the important uh, takeaways from the presentation, how the expert from your team communicate with the local people. So at the end, it can leverage the knowledge, experience and also ownership. This is also important when we discuss with the local communities. Thank you so much, Dr. Ahmad Agustiawan for the inspire, uh, inspiring presentation. Uh, again, uh, feel free uh, and we are very welcome for your further contribution to our discussion. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the next uh, uh, presentation, since we have a technical uh, challenge uh, from Cray colleagues before, uh, Dr. Gu, may I check with uh, Cray whether you able to connect with us so maybe uh, allow us, uh, I would like to encourage all of the participants here to uh, listen again for the important message from Cray, if I may. So thank you, Satya. But maybe uh, I would like to uh, please uh, Cray, uh, Ms. Muji and Dr. Gu to share your uh, perspective, please. Would you mind to unmute your microphone? I think. Okay. Can yes, we be? Please. Excuse me. Can we be heard clearly right now? Yes. We can okay. hear. Great. Yes. Please Sorry continue the the, uh, the remarks. For the disruption of the interconnection. So right now, I'd like to invite our deputy director, Mr. Gu Hongbin, to give you <laughs> the, some few um, thoughts about the China's PV plus. Okay, thank you. No problem at all. This is common in the real world. Thank, thank you. you. Please. Uh, uh, this year, as we work to prepare for the ASEAN China Clean Energy Cooperation Center, we received strong support from AMS, AMS as well as ASEC. Here, I would like to express our sincere gratitude. Next, I would like to share a few points on China solar PV development. Solar PV energy 
is an <coughs> alternative energy with wide resources distribution and applications. Both in China and ASEAN, it has been developed, de developed fast and playing a major role in RE development and energy transition. By the end of 2021, China's solar PV installed capacity had increased about 55 gigawatt and reached 306 gigawatt and distributed citrons <coughs> had further celebrated <coughs> taking up more than half of the additional capacity for the first time. In 2020, solar power price reached a competitive level compared with coal-fired power in the 13-5-year plan. Mainstream PV cell technology roadmap was robustly upgraded. The conversion rate reached over 23%. In the 14 5 year plan with greater ages on cost and production capacity, China has been focusing on solar PV plus, namely the development and utilization of PV in multiple scenarios, including the <coughs> combined utilization models, multi-purpose land use, and a new power system with high RE protect, proportion and environmental standards. In the past decades, China has gained significant practical experience in solar PV development. We are willing to share with the AMS colleagues and contribute to the sustainable development of ASEAN. Ladies and gentlemen, China and AMS are close, closely connected. We both have great potential and capacity in clean energy development. And we are also faced with common challenges. <coughs> challenges. I believe this event will play a key role, help us strengthen <coughs> concrete cooperation and uh, leverage our respective advantage towards a low carbon and a sustainable future. Last but not least, I wish this event a great success. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zetia, I think we can, yeah, <laughs> the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gu and uh, Dr. Muji for the insightful uh, remarks. Uh, I think uh, this is something that we need to connect with the regional perspective. It's somehow in line with our next uh, presentation, uh, which will be by the ASEAN Center for Energy. And we also noted your strong willingness from China for further sustainable energy development in ASEAN. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear further regarding utilization and potential uh, of green recovery strategy for solar PV plus. This is uh, this will be presented by my colleague, uh, Ms. Monica Merdegawati. She is a research analyst of the ASEAN Center for Energy. Uh, she is uh, responsible for the engagement with government officials, various studies covering renewable energy and energy efficiency investment in ASEAN. Prior to ACE, uh, she was a developer of wind and solar farms in Indonesia. Her research uh, interest includes energy climate policy and energy economics. She holds a, a master degree in mechanical engineering from University of Southampton, United Kingdom. Ms. Monica, time is yours. Maybe, uh, I will uh, remind you for the 15 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Septia, for the kind introduction. Uh, hello, distinguished uh, participants honorable speakers and panelists. Uh, I am Monica Merdekawati, currently a research analyst of the uh, Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency Department of AIS. 
It is my pleasure to deliver the second presentation of today's capacity building. So hopefully for the next 15 minutes, I will be able to share the solar TV plus utilization and its potential as green recovery strategy in ASEAN. Uh, next slide, please. So yeah, I will begin by briefly introducing my organization, ACE. ACE is an intergovernmental organization under the purview of ASEAN Secretariat that represents the interests of 10 ASEAN member states in energy sector. Uh, we have three main roles to be a think tank, energy data and knowledge hub, and catalyst of energy cooperation in ASEAN. The catalyst role is our core mandate, which is to strengthen the, uh, the integration between the member countries through the implementation of the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, or APAIC in short. Next slide, please. So APAIC is a series of guiding policy documents that support the regional energy cooperation in achieving the goals of ASEAN economic community. Uh, APAIC as the blueprint, uh, advises many action plans and programs that are categorized uh, into seven area. Uh, and uh, the document itself is reviewed and renewed by the member states every five years to address uh, dynamic energy challenges and rapid technological uh, development. Uh, currently, we are at the fifth installment uh, or known as APAIC phase two. Uh, covering the period of 2021 until 2025. By uh, 2026, or yeah, like less than uh, four years from now, uh, we will have the uh, latest APEC blueprint. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned uh, previously, APEC has seven program area, hence reflecting seven directions or as presented here. So amongst the seven priorities, I would like to highlight the two indicators that highlight uh, uh, concerns, I mean, highlighted under the red box here. Uh, they are to achieve 23% renewable energy share of uh, from the total uh, primary energy supply or TPS by 2025, or equal to 35% uh, share of total installed capacity, and also to achieve the 32% energy intensity reduction by 2025. These two indicators are the best premise. Uh, uh, of other uh, priorities here, which are to put to the higher energy investment, for example, and to adopt a uh, uh, higher uh, and to adopt uh, new and emerging uh, technologies and also digitalization, for example. So ASEAN in the end could be a regional community that stronger and could uh, be resilient in facing the the new issues like global warming and also the increasing natural disasters. Next slide, please. So this capacity building is part of the project called the utilization of solar PV to support the green economic recovery in ASEAN post COVID-19, which is co-implemented by ACE and also China Renewable Energy Engineering Institute or CRE with the financial support from the ASEAN China Cooperation Fund. The core activities uh, are the capacity building program, which is like the two-day workshop, and also the site visits to the solar PV sites in Indonesia. And uh, I would like to briefly remind the participants here to register if you haven't by scanning the QR code here uh, to register to the second and third day of the workshop. And also I would like to highlight that we will publish a joint report on November 2022 which will summarize the strategic action plan to be considered by the ASEAN member states to support the applied implementation. Uh, so, uh, and in the next few slides, I will share the findings of the two activities for outcomes from this project here under the uh, red boxes here. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, now we have come to the core topic of the presentation, which is uh, about the solar PV itself. So uh, ASEAN generally have the uh, very uh, fast uh, solar potential with 12 hours uh, sunlight on average and the actual uh, technical economic and economic potential of solar resources depends on multiple factors such as resource quality, uh, country specific economics and also techno economic assumptions such as in, uh, installed and fixed OM costs. Uh, the results, as presented uh, in the picture on the left, uh, 
uh, the highest potential is found in Thailand and Myanmar, where the solar PV could generate more than uh, 7,000 gigawatt, and the gap is large from other countries, uh, like for, you can see here, in the medium uh, category countries, and also uh, the lowest uh, potential is found in Brunei Darussalam and Singapore. Uh, next slide, please. So when we compare these potentials with the national tar target, uh, surprisingly, some member states so show contradiction, for example, like Thailand and Myanmar, which are found to have high potential, have lower targets than medium category countries, and amongst the medium category countries like Indonesia and Vietnam have the highest targets. So Indonesia with the recent uh, net zero announcement become the second most ambitious after Vietnam with 6.5 gigawatt target by 2025, meaning like have to catch up with six gigawatt in less than three years and to achieve 45 gigawatt target by 2050. But on the other hand, Vietnam has more, uh, I would say a reasonable plan with more detailed solar target set per uh, five years. And here we also can see low PDR has the lowest solar target due to their focus on hydropower development, despite can pursue more for solar development. And amongst the low potential category, Singapore is the country with uh, who explore their solar potential to optimum level, while Brunei Darussalam doesn't have a specific target for solar development. Next slide, please. So, Meanwhile, on the regional level, the renewable energy has reached 33.5% share or only 1.5% short in achieving the regional RE, I mean, APEC target. However, in terms of total primary energy supply, this achievement equals to only 14.2% share, indicating that a significant renewable energy share from the installed capacity are not translated well into electricity dispatch. So furthermore, the share of uh, solar installed capacity is still much lower than uh, other renewable energy sources, for example, like hydro. Uh, it is not wrong, actually, but diversifying energy mix has always regarded as a soundproof plan to enhance uh, energy security. Therefore, to optimize the solar utilization into its full potential, uh, I believe, uh, as an need innovative solution, one of the strategic alternative is the solar PV plus. Next slide, please. So what is solar PV plus? Solar PV plus is a concept that extends the application of solar PV beyond power generating uh, facilities to being combined with, with other sectors such as industry, agriculture, building, fishery, husbandry, and etc. Uh, beyond the potential cabinet with solar PV system recently has been uh, regarded uh, as the solution to overcome uh, like uh, the intermittency issue, for example, and to like increase the the like hydropower plan and uh, to also increase other like pro uh, ag crops crop production in the agriculture sector. So the PV system plus uh, uh, the PV plus system basically has the potential to energy uh, to address energy vulnerability against climate change and also increases energy supply, food and water uh, resilience. So, but in, in practice, the solar PV plus implementation is no different than uh, the normal solar PV project. They are implemented in the forms of ground mounted, like uh, you see in the picture here, or floating PP or distributed system or rooftop such, uh, yeah, you can see here. Next slide, please. So why is it uh, important to couple the concept of solar PP plus with economic recovery? First uh, and probably foremost, <laughs> the potential uh, co-benefit is uh, its ability to address the land scarcity issue. And uh, maybe also because uh, as a uh, I mean, as we can see, and I will prove later in my later slides that uh, solar project is or renewable energy in general is proven more resilient than fossil fuel in the time of pandemic. And uh, solar PV require, especially solar PV plus project requires such uh, much lower investment than the utility scale, utility scale one. 
or other renewable energy projects such as hydro power that requires basically upfront uh, financing that comparable with uh, infrastructure projects. Therefore, it offer a minimum reliance on public funding. And also, the, we can expect the multiplier uh, uh, positive benefits from the solar PV projects site, such as uh, scalable job creation and other potential uh, economic activities that can um, grow uh, 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 along the supply chain, such as logistics, manufacturing, and also recycling. And the cost of solar PV is uh, become more competitive than fossil fuel. Uh, and also, like in the case of solar rooftop, the energy saving potential could offer additional revenue. And in some cases, the cooperation, like for example, the hydropower has been proven in improving the overall uh, capacity production of the power plant itself. And like overall, is it is hoped to reduce the greenhouse uh, gases uh, emission. So next slide, please. Yeah. And how is the progress uh, in ASEAN? So it turns out ASEAN member states have consistently promote solar PV utilization, solar PV plus utilization through the annual ASEAN Energy Awards when the term of solar PV plus itself is not yet popularized. Uh, so therefore, I believe we just need to enhance the coordinated efforts by truly understanding the potential co-benefits in every economic activity. So what is ASEAN Energy Awards? Uh, it's like the awards, but first held in Hanoi, uh, Vietnam on 2000, the year 2000. Uh, and since then, perhaps already almost like 1000 applications uh, to ASEAN Energy Awards in total. And here I would like to highlight how renewable energy is such a resilient uh, sector during the, pan the pandemic. Because in the period of 2020 until 2022, we received like 20, I mean, 244 applications on renewable energy and energy efficiency related projects. Next slide, please. And the projects related to the solar PV plus category is 44 projects where most are related to building like the IPP or rooftop solar and a significant share for rural com uh, community electrification and a few projects with specific uh, application proposed, such as fishery, water desalination, uh, floating PV on hydropower dam. In terms of country, here are the country origins dominated by Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Next slide, please. So, uh, and here I would like to finally share uh, the, the 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 recent uh, site uh, lessons learned from the site visits, where uh, we visited uh, Likupang Solar Power Plant in Manado and four solar farms in West Manggare region of East Nusa Tenggara Indonesia, where uh, we we come across like six concluding remarks here that we should note on solar PV plus utilization. First, it's I mean the site. Uh, the solar PV is just a perfect uh, solution for remote lo location. Uh, the tangible benefits is expressed by the community there and because it improves the quality of life and also economic activity uh, there. And also, uh, uh, we also noted that the community expressed the need for uh, enhanced capacity building like for uh, and also the need to ex, uh, extend the capacity itself like uh, they need bigger capacity because the economic activity is increasing therefore they need more energy they therefore they they need like more capacity and also uh, battery replacement uh, and uh, capacity building uh, as i mentioned is essential for the maintenance and to keep the solar PV running and also the input policies that is needed, like new business, uh, the policies that could accommodate new business models, and also policies to address like all the supply chain elements, for example, like with how to recycle the solar PV, and also the needed incentives to expand the solar PV in the rural areas. Next slide, please. So yeah, that concludes my presentation, and I return the floor uh, back to Mr. Septia. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Monica, for the excellent presentation. This is something that uh, showing a concrete result from the previous remarks from Cray. 
So from the sponsorship or support uh, from China, we're able to visit uh, rural area and then we can seek and identify what is the challenge and the opportunities there. Uh, on top of that, uh, we need more and more activities to scale up our renewable energy activities to the region. So at the end, so uh, hopefully we're able to achieve our APAI target uh, in five. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Monica, for uh, inspiring presentation. Next, I couldn't uh, wait any longer for next two uh, great speakers. Uh, first, I would like to go to Dr. Wang first. Uh, uh, as you may aware, uh, Dr. Wang Shu is a senior engineer from uh, Cray. Uh, he, is, uh, he has a long uh, engage, uh, engagement for research on solar PV technology, system design, industry development, and so on and so forth. So, so many uh, challenges in terms of the efficiency of solar PV, uh, appropriateness and uh, alignment with the uh, 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 intensity of the, uh, of the sun. So we have that kind of challenge region. Maybe uh, from the perspective of Dr. Wang, uh, we can hear further maybe best practice from China. Uh, without further ado, uh, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Wang Shou to share your presentation, please. I would like to remind you if your time and what to finish. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me? Um, yes, perfect. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, share some examples and experience uh, of the PV plus utilization in China. So uh, next, please. Yeah, uh, briefly, my talk will include uh, three main parts and the, the development of PV plus in China and uh, the prospect and also the last part to give some uh, conclusion. Uh, so the next please. Yeah, the first we will talk about the development status uh, in China of, uh, of PV plus in China. So uh, the first thing is why we want to do this PV plus application. Uh, of course, it is because we have the limited land resource for the PV application, although China is a, is a big country, right? Um, thanks for the, for the high adaptability of PV, we can, we can uh, install it uh, in, many, in many modes and in many scenarios and to give the, um, and to contribute to the energy transition. And in general, we can divide this uh, PV plus in China into three uh, categories. The first one is the PV plus uh, the other energy forms such as the hydropower, the wind power, and the CSP, and so on. And the second one is the uh, PV combined with the transition of social, social development, such as the uh, rural revitalment, uh, revitalization, which I will talk about later. And the third one is the PV plus other sectors such as the agriculture, fishery, uh, the stock breeding and building and so on. The next please. Uh, the next piece, yeah. Uh, in general, China has uh, policies to promote the application of this PV plus utilization. Uh, in, we, we, we try to promote it for the uh, in innovative utilization in multiple scenarios and industries uh, with the target to increase the value of the complex utilization of the land source. Uh, we will improve the coordination between PV and other type of, of the land use in the planning stage. And also we have policies to accelerate the application of, of different kind of PV plus utilization. And in the future, um, the PV combined with the uh, electrical vehicle charging facilities and 5G uh, communication uh, facilities will be an important part for this kind of application. So uh, the next piece. Yeah, uh, here I would like to share you some examples. Uh, in China. The first part is about the PV plus other energy forms. And in this, in this slide is, uh, is, a, is, a, is an example of the PV plus wind power and the thermal power. It works as the power source for the Hami to Zhengzhou uh, ultra high voltage transmission channel. 
it, it includes uh, five gigawatts wind power, 1.25 gigawatts PV and 6.6 6 uh, .6 gigawatts thermal power, thermal energy. Yeah. Uh, with the complementary uh, working with the, of these three kinds of uh, energies, uh, we can improve the consumption of the wind and, and solar power, uh, obviously. Yeah, we can improve the consumption. Yes. Uh, next, please. Yeah, and this example is about the PV plus hydropower. Uh, it's a, a it's a PV project located in uh, Gonghe County in Qinghai Province. Uh, it works. It works together with the Longyangxia Hydropower Station as the biggest PV plus hydropower complementary plant. Uh, on the right part, we can see a, a schematic diagram of this uh, this project. Uh, we we have this um, yeah we have this Longyangxia Hydropower and also the PV plant, which will together, and the uh, the the ad adjustment of the hydropower can. Uh, improved the stability and the, uh, can improve the stability of the PV output and to make it more friendly to the grid. Uh, next, please. Yeah, uh, here is an example of the PV plus concentrated solar thermal power, uh, which is uh, CSP for short. Uh, this is located um, in Dunhuang, in, in Gansu province in China. It is uh, located at about 25 kilometers away from Dunhuang city, and this area is about uh, 254 uh, square kilometers. It includes uh, the photovoltaic power generation and, uh, uh, and uh, 100 megawatts uh, concentrated solar power. The CSP can work also as uh, as some uh, as the modulation to the PV output and make it more stable and friendly to the to the uh, grid. So next, please. Yeah, the second second part is about the PV plus uh, other sectors. Uh, here we have several. Uh, projects about the PV plus agriculture or fishery or stock uh, breeding. Uh, in this type of utilization, we can improve the efficiency of uh, utilization, in, in, utilization efficiency of the land and water surface. We can have the power generation on the top and fishery and other things uh, under the PV panels. Uh, in this kind of uh, projects, we usually have uh, higher brackets or and uh, broader distance between lines of brackets than the normal plants. And we have several demonstration projects, uh, especially in, in the top runner PV projects in uh, for different for different kind of utilization. And next please. And this and next one is about the PV plus building, which is uh, we can call it BIPV for the uh, building integrated PV. Uh, in this kind of application, uh, the PV is uh, is integrated uh, as part of the building, and it um, the PV products and the PV panels will be used as uh, as the building materials. Uh, with uh, with the ability to produce electricity, uh, the the advantage of this kind of use is this uh, it, it needs no uh, extra land and can use the the wall of the buildings. Uh, with a rough uh, estimation, uh, we have a potential of uh, more than ten gigawatts of this kind of application in China. So the next one, please. Yeah, and here is a small example of the PV plus the sewage a sewage treatment plant. Uh, the the PV project the PV plant was uh, built 
uh, on the surface of a sewage treatment plant. Uh, I mean, on the, on, the, on the top of the sewage tank, the sedimental tank and, and something else. It, is, it, it provides a new way to use the, uh, the land resource um, more efficiently. Yes, so the next one, please. Yeah, the third part is about the PV plus transition of social development. Uh, the, first, the first example is the PV uh, poverty alleviation. It is a project promoted by the National Energy Administration and the Poverty Alleviation Office. It started from 2015. Um, in this project, by um, instead, instead of paying money directly to the poor people, the government just pay for the cost of PV plants installation. And all the, all the income from selling the money uh, will be given to the poor people in the village. And by the end of this project in 2019, the capacity of this kind of project is over 22 gigawatts in total and benefits uh, more than 4 million households. And after this project, um, another, another project of uh, rooftop distributed uh, PV development uh, throughout the country is undergoing. So the next, please. Uh, the next page, please. Just quickly remind, Dr. Wang, if I may, uh, you have uh, three minutes left. Thank you. Okay, then I'll be quickly. Uh, next one is the PV plus uh, desertification management uh, because the PV can be uh, in, the, in the Western part, we have lots of desert in China. And uh, with this kind of application, we can, uh, to, we can produce the power from PV and uh, mean, mean time to perform the, this kind of desertification management at the same time. Yeah, next time, uh, next place. Okay, the, the next part we want to talk about the, the prospect of this PV plus application. Um, the first one I want to mention is we need more comprehensive regulations regarding this uh, application. The first one is the land occupation because at the, and at the initial stage, we don't have um, sufficient regulations for, the, uh, for this kind of flexible application. And from and in our days, the uh, in China, many uh, different department has proposed several regulations and considerations regarding this uh, PV application. Next, please. And also, we need to uh, take more consideration about these uh, construction standards because um, we need to we need more specific standards and regulations for design management and maintenance of this composite PV plus project, such as which, uh, what is the best solution for the PV and environment in, in the desertation management project, and also how to find the proper plant and design for the highest economic value in the PV plus agriculture uh, case. So the next, next page, please. Yeah, and the second thing I want to mention is we need to treat this PV plus application from a more systematic perspective. The first thing is the operation and safety because we have more and more uh, renewable energy in the grid and uh, the high proportion of insulation and, and uh, electricity is not the only target. We need the whole system to be stable and safe. Uh, if we look at the PV plus application, we have some of them to improve the of, to improve the stability of China, uh, to to improve the stability of PV. But for some other application forms, we need more attention, such as the electric shock and the functional. And for the PV, for the BIPV, we need to we need the PV panels to work as uh, building materials. And next page, please. Yeah, the next thing is about the cost. At, at the beginning, we need just to think about uh, the cost of photo of the PV plant itself. But uh, in the second stage, we need to also consider the investment and income of 
the uh, extra application in this kind of composite application. So, so for example, the investment and income of the fishery, agriculture, and, and other things. And we also can save some money from the modulation if we have this uh, PV plus hydropower and CSP. And we also have uh, extra ex experimental um, experimental benefits and social benefits from this PV plus. And in the future, we need to uh, think more about this cost in the whole system because we need the grid to, to perform the uh, modulation to keep it safe and stable. And we also need to consider the cost of storage, but we can have some extra income from the green certificate and carbon treating and something else. So that's uh, to shortly conclude, we have ra rapid development of this PV, uh, uh, PV, PV plus application in China, and we have, it in, has enabled um, many uh, new application scenarios and, and applications. Uh, it is an important measure to break limitation of land resource for the high ratio applications, but we need to we, but we need more specific regulations to keep it healthy and to consider the design and cost evaluation of this PV plus from a more systematic perspective. So that's all. Thanks for your uh, Thanks for your attention. Wow, Dr. Wang, you you provide uh, magnificent options of solar PV plus application in China. I think this is uh, something that relevant with the situation in ASEAN. As mentioned by Ms. Monica and Dr. Ahmad earlier, we have probably a more than 1,000 yeah, uh, island situation, for example, like Indonesia and the Philippines, and with different kind of uh, uh, potential application. Maybe this is something that in line with the condition in ASEAN and need further discussion to apply this. And not to mention uh, about the cost, uh, the cost aspect. This is uh, extremely important and uh, quite quite interesting to, to have further discussion. Again, thank you very much for... Uh, for the interesting presentation, uh, Dr. Wang. Let's go mm -hmm. to the next uh, speaker. I believe this also very interesting uh, uh, material will be shared by uh, Mr. Sasha Cross Tunker, the CFO X, uh, of uh, Next to Sun. Uh, he is responsible for the company business development, has a strong focus on renewable energy and sustainability. Uh, previously worked as the expert uh, interim manager focusing in project uh, management uh, in the business and has a lot of experience uh, in renewable energy. He completed a master degree in, uh, sorry, master in business administration at the Johann Wolfgang Goethe University in Frankfurt uh, in Germany. Uh, without further ado, I would like to share the floor with uh, Mr. Sasha to share chance and challenges for agrivoltaics. Mr. Sasha, time is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot for the invitation. I'm, Excellent voice. Now, okay. I'm very happy to uh, yeah be here and to be uh, have the opportunity um, to show uh, some insights from our um, uh, approach of Agri PV. Um, we all already see some. Uh, in the background, but uh, yeah, I will go deeper in it within my presentation. Um, I will now share my screen. I will try to. Is it? I think it's still progressing. Is that Sasha? Yeah, I just try to um, share my screen. Just a second. So, now we should see our presentation, right? Yes, we can see it. Okay, Would great. You make it a full screen, please. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, what you see here is uh, our approach of uh, AgriPV, um, which is uh, a vertical installation. Uh, and I think uh, which what is obviously to be seen is that uh, it takes uh, only very rare space, um, which means we have a lot of space left for agricultural use. 
Um, and uh, I think this is, of course, uh, what we are talking about. Yeah? We wanted to have the dual use of the land. Um, we want to have the possibility um, yeah, to, to use it for agricultural um, uh, prospects. And we will, of course, um, yeah, we'll also um, we want to have um, conventional machinery in use in between, and that's what we see here in this plant in Germany. Um, we have a row spacing of 10 meters, which makes uh, really agriculture with real heavy agricultural machinery uh, possible. Um, so just a short uh, overview of how the system looks like. Yeah, we simply have this uh, rumming post, so we do not need uh, any concrete or so. Um, we have the vertical installation of bifacial modules, of course, which takes the uh, um, energy from both sides. And we have uh, yeah, space in, a lot of space in between for agricultural use. Uh, and also a little bit uh, additional uh, space for um, ecologic enhancement since uh, we see the areas directly next to the modules are not very easy to handle for agriculture. Uh, simply, uh, it's not, uh, since it's not usable with heavy machinery, uh, but there is space left for uh, ecologic enhancement. So I think, uh, yeah, the most important topic, of course, is the agriculture. And there the advantage of this approach is that we have uh, only uh, uh, less than 1% uh, ground coverage. Uh, due to the, uh, from the installation. We have nearly uh, no impact on the water supply um, and we catch up uh, only a small portion of the irradiation, which is 10 to 15%, um, and uh, which can of course also be an advantage for the crops. Um, yeah, and about, as I already said, about 90% can be used. Uh, we see a huge variety of potential crops which can be used for example, grain like wheat or barley or rice, uh, but also potatoes, beets, carrots, uh, legumes, um, yeah, uh, a lot different types, but of course not all. Yeah? For example, corn or sunflowers, which are uh, rising up to two meters or three or four, makes no sense since they would uh, shadow the modules. Um, so, uh, yeah. We need to, um, uh, yeah, we, we need to, to take one which fits to this type of installation. Um, we also have some uh, harvesting data uh, which uh, uh, have shown in a very dry year, 2020, very positive impact on the growth of the um, agricultural plant. And this, uh, in this time, uh, it was uh, grassland. Uh, where we had a uh, much better um, harvest uh, in between the rows uh, than um, outside the field yeah, where we measured. And um, also within the rows, we saw that uh, the um, stripes directly next to the modules were better than um, uh, in the inner field. Uh, so uh, we see that there can be a positive effect from the, um, uh, yeah, I call them solar hedges, uh, to the uh, agricultural use of the land. Um, but we have to see further um, advantages, which uh, can be, uh, I think, very useful. Um, as that is especially the uh, question of grid efficiency and uh, uh, as I already mentioned, the possibility of uh, ecological upgrading. Um, yeah, first of all, uh, vertical, does it make sense? Um, we started, uh, so let's say, that does it make sense from the um, PV uh, aspect? Um, uh, we started developing it in 2030 and uh, installed our first uh, trial. And uh, we can say, yes, it makes sense. And indeed, what we found much later was uh, this um, publication also from 2030, which shows that there is a huge um, areas in the world where vertical also in theory is better than fixed tilted uh, south oriented. Huh? This is a, a darker um, part. Yeah? So uh, indeed, uh, it's not very clear. Um, 
there are huge parts of the world where um, uh, vertical is better, other ones uh, where um, the um, fixed tilted south is a little bit better, but the differences are not that huge that we can say, um, yeah, in general, it's uh, uh, possible uh, yeah, all over the world, I think. And uh, so we are now come to a very important aspect from our side, that's the production profile. If we um, uh, mount this uh, with east-west orientation, as we uh, often do, we have a, uh, um, uh, yes, an anti-cyclic um, production profile. And I think this is very, very important. Uh, we see on the right-hand side the energy market in Germany uh, with the peak production from PV at noon. Um, which is a huge um, uh, challenge for the grid and also yeah, a huge challenge to get uh, electricity um, when the PV doesn't deliver. And that's exactly what this uh, system can do. Uh, we can have direct PV production in the morning and evening hours, um, and um, uh, which would uh, really um, gives a chance to use the grid more efficient. Uh, in Germany, this is a huge bottleneck, and I think it's uh, not very different uh, in other countries. Um, so we can simply use it uh, if more efficient by adding um, vertical PV with this west orientation to the um, uh, south-oriented fixed tilt one, uh, and get a more stable um, supply of um, PV production. And I think this is quite, um, yeah, quite important aspect. Um, is it does it belongs to Agri uh, PV? This sounds more a question of the uh, um, vertical bifurcation technology, uh, and the answer is yes, it is. But both, uh, yeah, it's uh, regarding it's only comes from vertical bifurcation, but uh, vertical bifurcation needs a lot of space between the rows uh, to avoid shadowing. And uh, what we need for agri-PV is also a lot of space between the rows for agricultural use. So this is a technology which can um, uh, stabilize the grid uh, uh, and can be used uh, by using it in uh, agri-PV. Um, mm -hmm. I think the ecological aspects I already mentioned, uh, we see uh, always the possibility to add um, uh, flower stripes or grass stripes or anything below the modules, uh, which is also, um, I think, a quite uh, positive aspect of agri-PV in general and this system special. And um, yeah, we also have some uh, other advantages that cleaning uh, is less needed normally since uh, dust more falls down and less uh, stays on the um, modules. And especially areas with uh, um, snow uh, are really a boost for the production of the system due to the increasing albedo, a higher reflection, and uh, which leads to higher energy uh, supply. So a lot of advantages um, regarding fuel or fuel um, conflict, uh, the grid stabilization. Uh, an increasing acceptance and uh, ecologic aspects. Uh, yeah, so the question is why don't do everybody already vertical by facial? Um, I think there is a huge uh, agri PV is really um, important topic, but it needs uh, to have a strong regulation to avoid abuse. Yeah? Um, since what we see on the picture is the installed capacity of course, is lower, much lower, let's say half uh, or around half of what you can install with conventional PV. Yeah, the advant advantages, of course, all what I mentioned, we can still have the agriculture, we can um, have this grid stabilization effect, but um, we have less PV uh, installed capacity. Uh, the productivity of the installed capacity is very really good but it's, uh, the capacity is lower. And um, here we see a high risk since all everybody is always uh, yeah, interested in uh, adding more PV since uh, the uh, monetary um, um, income from PV 
I think it's in Germany the same as everywhere else in the world is much, much higher. In Germany, we see uh, the, even in normal times, 50, 60,000 euros per hectare from PV. Uh, and we see maybe about 2,000 from agriculture. So uh, there's always a very strong incentive um, to add more um, electricity production. And that's not possible uh, with uh, AgriPV and you lose the land for agricultural use. So if you really uh, want to have the double use, uh, uh, you need to have a strong regulation for the uh, agricultural use um, to avoid. Um, yeah, I think that's what I already um, explained. Um, if we are talking in Germany and Europe, we have agricultural subsidies um, for uh, agriculture in general. Of course, this also needs to be um, paid if it's an um, uh, agri-PV plant for the agricultural use. Um, Agri-PV, of course, needs to be allowed on agricultural ground and also uh, and only agri-PV. I think that's a very important point. Um, we need uh, to have a strong regulation for um, agri-PV, which only allows real agri-PV and not, uh, yeah, some greenwashed, uh, what we call pseudo agri PV uh, with conventional plants. Uh, and the same for the feed in tariffs. Yeah? If there are feed in tariffs, I don't know uh, uh, every regulation in the different countries, but I think more or less, uh, yeah, many will have um, feed in tariffs. Uh, this, of course, also need to be granted uh, on agricultural uh, land for agri PV. Um, and maybe with a, with a little incentive uh, for this WUs. Um, so we also thought about, um, let's say, quite. Sorry, uh, Mr. Sasha. Uh, yeah. Let me to remind for three minutes left for your presentation, please. It's the last. Um, uh, it's the last uh, one I want to show you. We simply have a very um, um, simple definition of agri PV. Uh, which we uh, would uh, recommend, uh, which is much easier than, for example, the German Dean spec. Um, and it simply says, uh, yeah, more than 90% or at least 90% of the area may not be uh, overbuilt by uh, superstructures um, lower than four meters. Yeah? So that would cover from our perspective, every uh, sort of real agri-PV. The high elevated ones where real agricultural um, um, production can take place um, under the modules, as well as such type of systems uh, where uh, a lot of space is left um, in between the rows for the agriculture. That was my presentation on the vertical vibration IBPP. Thanks a lot for this. Um, uh, Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sasha, for very interesting presentation. I myself uh, really enjoy the information here. But I think uh, it's simply because, at least in the region, uh, we, based on the latest data, we uh, have uh, 100 million farmers yeah, exist, uh, which uh, consists of uh, local farmers or maybe uh, like a company. So this is something uh, quite interesting as well to change on how to apply solar PV plus in the agriculture sector. And so many things that need to explore actually, but uh, time constraint, uh, let's go to the next uh, section of our uh, uh, section today. Uh, apart from the uh, uh, speakers here, we also have our colleague from uh, Lao PDR and also Thailand. From Lao PDR, we have uh, Mr. Bualam Sai Senabong, the Director, Division of Renewable Energy Promotion of Lao PDR. And from Thailand, we have Mr. Wacharin uh, Pachichen, uh, an engineer of the Department of Alternative Energy Development and Efficiency, DED of Thailand. Uh, I would like to encourage all of the speakers and uh, expected panelists uh, to open your camera, please. So then we can begin our discussion session. On this, uh, I would like to prioritize any uh, questions or comment from our uh, participants here. Uh, I would like to check uh, for a while uh, if, if I may. 
I would like to encourage uh, all participants here to share any thoughts or questions. So many things actually need to be clarified or maybe need to be deep dive uh, discussion. So feel free. So I'll, later on, uh, I will uh, read and share to the respective uh, speakers or panelists. Uh, while we are waiting for uh, questions from the audience, uh, if I may, I would like to go to Mr. Walom and uh, Mr. Wajarin first. Uh, need your perspective and uh, sharing knowledge here. Uh, regarding the context of solar PV plus utilization, we, we know that it has grown in ASEAN, although with a limited scale under the current policies and uh, that, that have been implemented by, by our member countries, especially like I'm sure in Lao PDR and Thailand. So what, what would be the, the needed uh, policy improvement to further scale up the solar PV plus project? Because from uh, the presentation we heard uh, so many opportunities come from China or maybe best practice also from Germany, Agri uh, PV Plus. So maybe I would like to go to Mr. Bualom first uh, to share your perspective, please. Mr. Bualom, would you mind to unmute? Yes. 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 Can, can you hear? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Uh... Thank you for uh, inviting me to join the, the, these meetings. So, uh, uh, I think I, I will update you uh, of the, the, the Laos uh, solar development first, and maybe I will go to a detail of the, what the, uh, the policy need to uh, develop of the solar energy in Laos. So, uh, as you maybe may already know, the Laos we have the, the potential of the renewable energy, especially for the hydropower, and also we have a uh, very good uh, solar radiation, especially in the center and and also in the southern of Laos. So after the, the government uh, announcement of the linear bonity strategy in the year 2011, uh, there has a lot of the private sector has the interest to development of the solar energy in Laos. So up to now, we have the eight project already operation with the uh, install capacity of uh, 56 megawatt. So this include of the, the solar 14, 14 megawatts. We have the on lens and solar 14, the one solar 14 already uh, operation. And also we have the uh, many project under the feasibility study. I think it's more than 50 uh, project with the uh, installed capacity city of the total is about more than 7,000 megawatt. These are uh, under the feasibility state. And we have the really big uh, solar scale for the solar 14, already designed the PPA with the EDL. So the, this uh, uh, install capacity about the 1,200 megawatts. I think will be the operate uh, in the year of 2025. Uh, and the government uh, try to promote the solar uh, for uh, leaders of the, 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 the imports. So we have import of electricity during the, the, the dry season. So how to reduce the, the impact of electricity? So we need to develop the solar. And, and also we promote the solar for the uh, rural area. That's the, the, the far from the uh, national kit. So we have the standalone uh, for project that's uh, supply of energy to the four villages in the rural areas. 
and solar. Also, we promote the solar for the agriculture. So use the solar to, for the pumping water to the irrigation canal. And also the government try to promote the solar for the charging station for the EV car. That's uh, the, the, the one, the, the, the priority that the, of the government to de develop of the solar project. And we have quite uh, potential because we have the 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 hydro. That's the meat. That's the, the reservoir uh, project. So we try to develop and use the the reservoir like at solar footing. Now we have the two project under feasibility study. One is the that I mentioned. 1,200 megawatt. And second is uh, uh, in the NAM 22 with uh, 240 megawatt is under feasibility study. And so far we are still lack up the, the, the specific the policy or the like a uh, uh, tariff for the solar. So we need to de develop of the, the, the tariff uh, of the solar. So, uh, so far we just a uh, uh, negotiation. Maybe it is uh, to get the uh, high price of the tariff or some project is a uh, low uh, tariff. So we try to set up the format of the, the, the tariff. And also we try to I uh, set up the guideline for the development of the solar because uh, uh, we don't have uh, when the, 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 the investor come, they don't know how to to process the up the, the in investment. So we try to develop the, the guideline or the, the, the role for the, the development of the solar. That's a, so far that we have the, done in our country. Excellent, Mr. Boalo. Meaning to say, the government try your best to maximize the potential of renewable energy in different uh, areas and sector, not only for the on-grid, but also for the off-grid uh, uh, implementation. Right? So yes. Thank you much, uh, Mr. Boalo. Uh, may I go to Mr. Wacharin, uh, please, to share your perspective? Um, good afternoon to you all. Um, in, in Thailand, um, I can think about two things very quick. Um, in Thailand, now government has a policy to purchase electricity from the residents who install solar rooftop, but the rate of purchasing is very low for them and they are not interested. So um, the policy needed to be improved is to make sure that the cost of purchasing electricity from the PV is reasonable in order to convince them to install the system. And the second one is, um, this is for the private sector. It is about the transmission line. Um, the private sector, when they produce electricity, they have to send electricity to the line that provided by the government. Um, they cannot make the, the transmission line. They cannot make their own, uh, their own line. The problem is the, the cost of renting the line is quite high for the investment, investor and the electricity sent to, to the line is limited. So if we want to um, improve the policy, I think the government has to reconsider about the transmission policy to facilitate the private sector. This is all I have. Thank you. Excellent, sharp to the point. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wachan. So this is an interesting point. I would go to, uh, to, 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 to Ms. Monica maybe. Uh, from the regional perspective, see from the angle of law PDR, how the countries uh, share, uh, want to reduce uh, import uh, possibility by uh, apply more renewable energy. So this is interesting. But in the region, we have target of RE in TPS uh, in 2025. And also from the perspective of Mr. Wachanin, 
uh, we have challenges here, especially for the cost or investment for the transmission and so on and so forth. Not to mention what happened in, 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 in Vietnam. So in your perspective, in the regional context, uh, what would be actually the, uh, maybe the role of renewable energy connecting to our uh, regional target here? So maybe uh, you can share uh, how it can, uh, it can, the, of course, the challenge, the opportunity from country level to, to uh, uh, contribution to the regional area target. Maybe you can share a perspective. Please. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Saktia, for the opportunity to respond to your question. Uh, perhaps in the regional level, uh, this, uh, the first that I can think of is like the uh, pursue the integration of the ASEAN power grid, where it allows the more renewable energy uh, uh, sharing between countries. Uh, and yeah, definitely we'll also open many possibilities to increase the renewable energy share in, in, in general. But again, it uh, the limitation is like the power grid itself is very expensive, like Mr. Wacharit mentioned. Uh, and also Mr. Bualom uh, also expressed how the investor to fund all these expensive projects is uh, very limited, right? And not to mention the government has to chip in a lot of money also on that. So uh, as an alternative, as I mentioned before, like we, we can pursue more like more uh, smaller, smaller solar PV projects like through the solar PV plus utilization uh, maybe what I would like to highlight, or not repeating the, my presentation, is surprisingly from the, my observation when uh, looking through the ASEAN Energy Awards, uh, it's still very rare to find the solar PV uh, implementation or adoption in the agricultural sector. So this is surprising where most of our countries here in ASEAN is like agriculture based, right? <laughs> so yeah, maybe uh, or one of the consideration that we should uh, focus more or pursue more in the regional level is like uh, initiating the the what the discussion with uh, cross-sectoral uh, regional bodies like from the agriculture perhaps so so they can like uh, consider more uh, solar PV for example solar PV utilization in the agricultural production by using many advanced technologies such as what uh, Mr. Sasha already presented, how it was implemented, already implemented in Europe. And maybe one other things uh, to comment on the law PDL case, uh, I, I'm quite, uh, I mean, I'm quite happy with the uh, increasingly uh, projects uh, of the solar PV projects and also hydropower projects in law PDR. Maybe if I can add more is like, uh, now it become clearer that solar PV can 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 be coupled with the hydropower right to increase the the energy production yield in general. So maybe that's also uh, the 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 part that we can or uh, in the regional level should should like uh, pitch more to the our member states that the agriculture and also the floating to hydropower is a promising promising uh, uh, area to be explored more. I think that's all back to you, Mas. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Monica. I think this is uh, one of the uh, further collaboration opportunities, colleague from Craig, or maybe from China, although we'll be next to Sun. So, hearing also a uh, challenge uh, from Thailand, also uh, like a uh, tariff uh, definition uh, challenge from Lao PDR, maybe we can do something to support the countries. And yeah, from, from the other angle, from the business uh, uh, and technological perspective, I would like to go to Dr. Wang and Mr. Sasha. What is, what is the uh, needed improvement, uh, such as uh, for a technology or business model to further scale up the solar PV utilization? Looking at the, the response from, from ACE and also uh, uh, from the ASEAN member states. Maybe I would like to go to Dr. Wang first and then followed by Mr. Sasha, please. Yeah, of course, um, the, the scale up of this kind of PV plus application needs the support from the technology and the business uh, part. And uh, regarding the technology, I would say it depends on uh, which kind of PV plus do you want to do. Uh, for example, if, if for some cases such as the 
uh, the PV plus uh, the agriculture maybe uh, is is it's basically still the still the PV we have PV uh, PV panels and we just need some some special design uh, as as maybe just uh, uh, Mr Mr Sasha has has mentioned in, in his uh, slides I think that's that's quite impressive. Um, and we just need some uh, some special design to to optimize the uh, uh, the the harvest of the sunlight and the and the electricity and also the uh, the, the 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 growth of of the plants. Yeah, we just keep to we just need to find the balance between them. And and but for some cases, for example, the for the application of the BIPV. We just we we surely need some some new technology. We need to uh, produce some special products with the uh, which can fulfill the requirements for the uh, building materials. Because if we want to use it as a building material, we need we need the uh, PV panels can uh, sh should be uh, waterproof and we can be there should be the. Uh, can be good against the fire and also it can be as strong enough to to support the the building and that that's something that's something special we need to some some new technology so and also we also need some uh, in other cases for example the pv plus hydropower and uh, pv plus the, the csp or something we need something uh, you know more um, how to say the this uh, in the system in, in the system level we need some new uh, strategy for the dispatch uh, of the grid to optimize the um, the generation between between different uh, between powers so I think that's that's a quite um, quite a big question I, I would say and for the uh, for the business model, I think we need to um, we need enough flexibility. Yeah. Um, so far, China has no uh, has no subsidies for for this kind of for the for the PV application. Uh, as far as I know, only some province uh, still have the some some little subsidy to the to the BIPV application. Uh, otherwise, uh, for, for the other applications, there's no subsidies anymore. Um, I think um, I think it's, it's in long term is it should be the should be the target we, without the PV should be uh, should develop without sub subsidies. But I think if, uh, if 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 it's if it is still in the in the initial stage, maybe some uh, subsidies or uh, some discount discount in the of, of the tax may be necessary to to start the uh, scale up development. Yeah, that's my that's my point of view. Yeah, thank you. Very interesting point. I couldn't agree more when you mentioned about technology that can leapfrog the RE utilization in the region. For example, when we're able to increase the efficiency of the, the panel, I think uh, when we apply to I don't know the, the vertical application as mentioned by Mr. Sasha. Uh, we can have better uh, result, yeah, output from the solar PV. So this is something we really encourage to have further discussion, and and it will be very interesting. Maybe from uh, a point of view of Mr. Sasha, maybe you can also in, uh, elaborate more uh, about the application of the vertical solar PV, including my previous uh, question, Mr. Sasha, please. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So I would uh, also clear. Yeah. Uh, say uh, in terms of technology, we do not see the, the real big challenges um, since uh, there are we are highly efficient uh, modules available, especially from China. Also with very uh, uh, very good uh, backside efficiency coming from the modern cell technology, uh, which works very good for for our application. Yeah? So from the technological aspect, we see um, of course. Yeah, Technology is uh, um, developing, and but but we can also work very well uh, with available uh, technologies in the market. Um, I think the business model is more the um, uh, challenge, and especially uh, the regulation. Yeah. So um, 
I think the advantage, of course, of AgriPV is that it keeps the agricultural land. That's the idea. And, uh, but of course, it also has, um, um, let's say, uh, shortcomings on the one end. Uh, in our case, especially, it's uh, the density of uh, the installed capacity on the ground. Uh, other technologies might be uh, have, might have a little bit higher density, but um, uh, higher cost as well, uh, the elevated one. And uh, what we see for a um, uh, yeah, successful development of AgriPV is, uh, on the one hand, uh, the regulation where it, it is allowed and where only AgriPV is allowed. On the other hand, maybe a slightly higher feed-in tariff. I think it must not be that much, but a little bit more expensive uh, this, this type of technology is. Um, and in this case, of course, a uh, really strong uh, regulation um, to uh, yeah, uh, differentiate between conventional PV on the one hand and agri-PV on the other hand, since otherwise we will see a lot of um, uh, greenwashed um, uh, conventional PV uh, where we do not want to have it and with feed-in tariffs which are much too expensive for it. Excellent, excellent. Uh, thank you so much for your perspective, uh, Mr. Sasha, on this one. Uh, we have a question from audience here. Uh, this is quite interesting. Uh, from Mr. Figo Akbar. Uh, thank you for sharing valuable information, uh, the panelists. Uh, I have a one question. What is the future direction of solar PV, uh, solar PV plus on the urban environment or cityscape and how it can be implemented broadly for making a uh, local smart grid. Because of the uh, time limitation, I would like also to combine this question with your last comment. Uh, your, I don't know, maybe your your hope, your wish, or maybe a future way forward uh, expectation from your side on this context. Because remember, we have two more uh, solar uh, uh, capacity building in October. Maybe we can consider and have further discussion on that. I would like to make a round uh, uh, to this uh, panel. Uh, speakers, maybe uh, first uh, uh, to Miss Monica, please. Thank you for um, the honor to start first. Uh, so, uh, in my opinion, the future, uh, especially like for Indonesia and Malaysia, I mean, like countries like with more advanced regulation uh, and uh, also more advanced uh, solar PP uh, supply chain and markets where the availability is every here and there. Uh, the future is like, yeah, it's pretty much you just need to do it. Like, maybe, for example, like Thailand with the rooftop solar uh, regulation, it's de definitely, I believe, will be extended to like cityscape, for example. So uh, I think the future is there, especially for countries that already uh, deployed these uh, solar uh, rooftop schemes. Uh, and yeah, and like uh, other uh, supporting uh, policy environment. And uh, and uh, to respond to the second question about the local smart grid, I see it is like not too related to the first question, but uh, definitely uh, uh, maybe it is something that uh, member states should look more because uh, we can uh, uh, couple this idea or or uh, yeah explore this idea with the community renewable energy, uh, yeah, com community-based renewable energy where the community can like build their own renewable energy sources and also maintain it and also finance it from the community. So I think that's definitely worth to try. And for the way forward for the solar plus utilization, as I mentioned before, uh, maybe at this stage, maybe for in the regional level, we just need to focus more on the economic benefit behind it. So like uh, the member states, like our main stakeholders, the government officials could really focus more on detailing all these regulations. For example, like Mr. Sasha mentioned how, how to mention, I mean, to regulate the clearly what is the AgriPP and what's not. Because like I noticed, like for example in Vietnam where the feed-in tariff really, really, really attractive. Uh, I heard from uh, like informant, but I, I believe it's just a gossip. Like the developer is seeking like ways to build uh just uh 
any structure with a solar rooftop above and call it a gravity. So that's definitely something that we should explore more. So the government officials are aware or to, about what to do and what not, and be, uh, we'll be more prepared to accommodate all these renewable energy development. I think that's all back to you, Master Pia. Excellent. Thank you so much for the perspective, Ms. Monica. Maybe I would like to go to uh, uh, Dr. Wang, uh, uh, please, uh, maybe also including your final comment. Uh, yeah, if I if my understanding is right, I think uh, as my as I mentioned in my in my slides and uh, in the future as in the uh, in the fourteenth five year plan of the renewable energy in in China, we also list some uh, some 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 targets includes the uh, the application of combine combined PV with the uh, digital facilities and traffic and uh, with, with the traffic part and also the communication part i think that's that's uh, quite a uh, quite important uh, aspect for the application of this kind of distributed pv in, in the cities yeah i think that's that's it Noted. thank you so much uh for the perspective maybe i'll go to thailand mr wacharin do you have any final comment or be something related with the other question, please? Um, yeah, um, about the future solar PV, I think in Thailand, uh, people, are, people are going to use the solar PV, uh, but like in the small community, they are going to have like a small power plant. Yeah, but it depends on the, how, the cost of the technology, because right now, if we have the solar PV, but the the energy is not stable. We have to sta stabilize the energy by using the energy storage system, uh, such as battery. When the cost of battery and the solar panel is quite low, um, the solar PV is going to be like popular for people in like in rural area, in suburban area. Yeah, I think um in in the future we will see the loss of PV. Uh, uh, PV panel in Thailand. That's what I think. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Watcher. Maybe go to uh, Mr. Sasha. You have a final comment or also something uh, with the earlier question? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, finally, we have, uh, we see a huge potential for agri PV in general and also for vertical PV in uh, Asia. Since uh, on the one hand, we have many countries have uh, of course a huge density of population so agricultural ground is valuable uh, valuable and need to be kept uh, for agricultural use and i think this is a quite quite important topic when we think about increasing capacities uh, of uh, uh, pv um, and I think agri pv is a way where we can handle this topic and uh, yeah second i think also the stabilization effect of the grid was already mentioned, uh, um, the problems um, here, AgriPV can also help. Um, and so we see, uh, yeah, the huge potential. Uh, but yeah, as I already mentioned, uh, we need the right um, regulation around, uh, which is challenging, no doubt. But uh, I think there's a possibility to find a way um, to develop AgriPV. Um, as a next step in the energy transition. Certainly, regulation is the key, yeah, for further uh, scale up the solar PV plus. Lastly, Mr. Uh, Wallum, do you have a final comment or perspective, please? Yes, <clears throat> just for to increase the, the scale up of the, the solar PV in the future, I think the first we have to develop fallout, we have to develop the, the technical standard. From now, we still not believe that the, the, the solar can be uh, can be the uh, uh, supply energy for the to meet the, our the, the demand because the, the solar is not uh, not the, the firm energy like uh, you can produce energy during the day time, but the, the, during the night time, how can we do? We need to develop other like uh, energy storage or the, to combine with the solar PV. But uh, it's a 
we need to develop in the future. I do agree. We have limitation here regarding the uh, the the supply from the solar PV. But of course, uh, this is something that we need to discuss further: technological perspective, business arrangement, regulation. So this is something that we need to shape and shape in the future. Uh, so we at the end, uh, it it we able to to set a positive environment for solar PV utilization in ASEAN. Um, I think. Uh, it's already uh, end of the time. Uh, I would like to thank you for all great panelists here. I think uh, I really enjoy uh, have a discussion with you all. I do hope we have further time to discuss uh, the solar PV plus utilization in ASEAN and share perspective uh, uh, from uh, your best practice uh, for whatever business that uh, you are currently running. Um, in ASEAN, of course, we have the APIC target to achieve the RE target in 2025, 33% in TPS, uh, something that we want to inline uh, with the SDGs. No one left behind. So this is something that we want to ensure uh, for the renewable energy utilization because different countries has different potential and has different uh, culture and also local people. So uh, much more discussion is needed. In the next capacity building, we do hope we have further intense discussion regarding the, the local uh, uh, situation and how we can deep dive into the utilization of RE from the specific technology. On top of that, uh, from the ASEAN Center for Energy, we would like to thank you uh, for the support from ASEAN China Cooperation Fund or ICCF and also CREI as implementing partner uh, with the ASEAN Center for Energy for the very good and productive uh, discussion that we have so far and also to uh, next to Sun, uh, representative from private sector and also from our dear member states here, uh, Law PDR, Mr. Bualom and Thailand, Mr. Wacharin, and my colleague here, Monica Matekawati. So I would like to thank you all for the great discussion that we have today. Uh, please remember, we still have further discussion in October. Maybe later on, my colleague will emphasize. I would like to say thank you for everyone. Apologize if I have uh, something uh, limitation during the moderation. Thank you very much again for your time. Back to you, Christina. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Sepia, for your great moderation and to our uh, to all our excellent speakers and also panelists who have shared their um, ideas, uh, insight, and also expertise related with the solar plus solar PV plus utilization as a green recovery strategy. We are now approaching to the end of uh, today's capacity building, but before we conclude this workshop, I would like to remind you all for our next capacity building which will be held on 5th October, 2022, with the main focus topic on solar PV plus in agriculture, fishery, and animal husbandry. I also would like to kindly remind all distinguished participants here to fill up the post evaluation form that we have already dropped in the chat box. Your input and feedback will be invaluable for improve our future event. We thank you once again for your cooperation and support. With this, I would like to thank you all again for this fruitful discussion and I wish you all good health and look forward to seeing you in the next event. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good day. See you in the next event. Bye-bye. Thank you.